Well hello again, welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name is Graham, this is X-Plane 12 and the Hot Start Challenger 650. In this video we're going to take another look at the ILS approach into Glasgow on runway 05, but instead of using the pilot to find waypoints we're going to simulate having radar vectors to final as you might have if you were flying on one of the online networks. And rather than landing, we're going to have a look at the missed approach procedure with the Challenger, how to fly the missed approach with the automatic FO. Let's jump inside. Okay, so just descending through flight level 160, we've got the APU running and the in-range checklist is complete. We've got a distance to the uh, airport according to the nav track of about 85 miles and radial distance straight to the airport is 47 miles. We're just approaching the waypoint Gerva. If you look on the number 2 FMS here, you can see that from Gerva towards Tunbury and Lanark it's showing a 1.66, 1.65 descent. That's because there's a constraint of 150 at Gerva and 70 at Lanark. If we look on the study screen for that, let's look at study, FMS, and VNAV path. I can zoom in here. You can see the aircraft is doing essentially a three degree path down towards Gerva, and it's now shallowing off to fly that 1.66 path down towards Larnark, just as you would expect. The thing is though, we're still expecting to get the shortcut, although we've got the full nav track on all the way towards uh, Larnark, I'm expecting to get a shortcut on the ILS approach. So with that in mind, flying this uh, shallow descent is maybe not ideal. So I'm going to change from the path to flight level change. I'm just going to click FLC. And you notice it goes VFLC. And it's going to go down to flight level 70 now. You'll notice that despite the fact it's VFLC, it's quite happily leaving the track behind. It's going to descend slightly steeper. That's because it will disarm the V-path capture as you leave the path. Once the deviation gets more than half scale, it will rearm V-path capture. So as we're descending, one of the important things is the uh, mode display for the auto thrust. You'll notice it's in descent now. But I can actually increase the power with my thrust lever because although the auto thrust is engaged uh, or it's armed, you'll notice the green lights have gone out. It pulls the power levers back for four seconds and then it declutches. So I've got control of the uh, rate of descent or control of the power with my hardware. One of the reasons that might be important is if you're descending in icing conditions. Any time below uh, 22,000 feet, if you're in icing conditions, less than 10 degrees total air temperature, you need both the cowl anti-ice and the wing anti-ice on. So on the Challenger, you run the wing anti-ice even if there's no ice present uh, in the descent below 22,000 feet in that icing condition. You'll notice that with the anti-ice on, the wing anti-ice on, your N2 display is in yellow here. So we need to give it a little bit more power, just increase the power a little bit, up to about 78% N2 and that will get us into the green on there. And you'll eventually get a message that says uh, cull and wing anti-ice on. So once it gets to 70, it's all green. But that's the reason why we've got manual control over the power, or one of the reasons we've got manual control over the power levers. Let's come back to idle, and we'll switch those off. So it'd be useful to see where we're descending down towards. Remember, we're going to get radar vectors on here. If I look on the right-hand MFD, I've got these memory functions uh, mapped up here, so that can essentially have different presets. If I push and hold on the memory button, it'll save what I've got on the screen into that preset. But I want to add, uh, I'm going to click lower menu, I want to add the airspace overlay. So lower menu, advance down to airspace and click that on. And there we go, I've got an airspace display. Obviously the zoom is always on the DCP, the control for the smaller screen. And whilst we're looking at these, uh, notice that the um, the blue ghost needles just arrived. That's because we're within 30 miles of the airport. So one of the things that I've seen on a recent stream is the inability to select the uh, synthetic vision. It's important to remember that you've got a different menu for the PFD and the MFD. And the PFD menu has the option to toggle SVS on and off. And that's the same on both sides. So looking at this airspace, I can descend down to 6,000 feet in this area here. 
5,000 feet there, 4,000 feet in this window, and at uh, this uh, segment, and this segment, and then down to the runway down here. So it looks like at the moment I can probably select uh, heading roughly towards the north. So I'm going to synchronize the heading. I'm going to synchronize the heading by pushing there, pushing heading mode, and then turning left onto approximately 360. I'll also select the speed to get it to 50 knots. And I'm going to descend down to altitude 6,000 feet. So I'll wind the vertical speed, uh, the altitude selector down to 6,000 and set uh, QNH1013. My aircraft is set to synchronize the settings between left and right for the altimeter setting. So hopefully you can see on the right hand MFD that we're tracking towards this segment here, the 6,000 segment and then the 4,000 segment. You'll notice on the uh, rose indicator here that the navigation track, the magenta bar, is still behind us, despite the localizer being ahead of us here. You see it's still trying to navigate towards Lanark on the FMS here, the waypoint Lanark, and you can see at the next waypoint on the window display here as well. That won't cause us any issues for actually flying the approach. That's totally fine. We can we can do that. Uh, it's gone into out capture because I've still got the constraint in there. So I'll deselect VNAV and go back to flight level change. So it's still got that 7000 constraint. And that's because Lanark is there. So that's one of the pitfalls in leaving it set like this. And also, if you fly a missed approach, it's not going to be able to fly the missed approach on the FMS if you don't have the FMS sequence correctly. So all I'm going to do is click Direct To. I'm going to choose the CF05, the uh, center fix, or the course to fix on there. You'll notice it proposes uh, a straight line to the CF. But I don't want that. I want to tell it to fly the inbound course for the ILS. So 048, put that on the intercept course. It's now going to propose a straight line. You can see it on the two MFDs here, the, the straight line here. I'll execute that. And as I execute it, keep an eye on the magenta on the... Um, HSI here. Now the magenta and the blue needles uh, overlay each other quite happily. Let's turn around to the left onto about uh, 315. We'll descend down to 4,000 feet. So I'm using my hardware to do that just to make it a little bit easier to save moving the view around. There's flight level change, 250 knots at 4,000 feet. At the moment, I'm 15 miles from the runway or from the uh, touchdown point and uh, I'm a little bit on the high side. So what I'm going to do is rather than use flight level change, I'll select vertical speed. I'll just let the vertical speed uh, bring it back to about 1500 and I'll bring my speed target back all the way to 200. So basically just using vertical speed to control the rate of descent and I can pop the spoilers as well to help the aircraft slow down. Let's zoom that display in a little bit more. That's 1,000 feet to go. Into the final segment here, I can go down to 3,000 feet. So wind it down to 3,000. And with that, I'll put the speed brake away and bring the vertical speed back to about 1,000 feet per minute. So we are 13 miles out and 4,000 feet. You'll notice that the glide slope is dancing around a little bit. The Challenger does fully simulate false localizer and false glide slope capture. Let's put another bearing pointer on for the FMS as well. If I click FMS uh, 2 on as one of the needles, that shows me where the FMS is trying to navigate to. And for this job here, it gives me a fairly useful uh, method to intercept. So I don't need to wait until I'm all the way back at 200 knots before selecting the flap. If I want the extra drag, I can take the first stage of flaps now. So flaps 20, and I'll dial the speed back to 180. I'll turn the heading uh, roughly on to 340. And I'll back the VS down to about 500 feet per minute now. It's always harder when you're trying to do the job of uh, a pilot and an air traffic controller at the same time. Put the landing lights on.
It looks like time to turn on to the final track, so let's turn on to uh, 005. And with that, I'll push the approach button. I've got localizer capture straight away and glide slope in white. So it's captured 3000 feet and we're just about to pick up the glide slope as well. Once we roll out, I'll bring the heading pointer around so that the uh, heading pointer is synchronized with the runway as well. So because this is going to be a missed approach, I'm going to configure the aircraft a little bit earlier so we've got some time to talk about the missed approach actions themselves. So the glide slope capture, I'm going to wind the speed back to 160, next stage of flaps, and gear down. The MFD data page here gives me a convenient reminder of the approach speeds. My VREF is 123 in this case. So I'll set 128 for the final approach speed. So final stage of flaps. And 128. And let's run the checklist. Before landing checklist. Landing gear lever. Down indicating. No steer. Arm centered clear. Anti-skid. Armed tested. Passenger signs. On. Wing cal anti-ice. Not required. On or off. Continuous ignition. On. Thrust reversers. Armed. Spoilers. Stowed auto. Flaps. Set. Cas. Checked. Checked. Before landing checklist complete. After landing checklist next. Okay, so because this is going to be a demonstration of the missed approach, rather than leveling at 3,000 feet as per the chart, I'm going to wind the missed approach altitude up to 6,000 feet. And what we're going to do is do all the missed approach actions one by one, rather than doing them simultaneously. We'll leave that to the second attempt at the missed approach. With the Challenger, the go around of the missed approach is flown with the auto thrust off and the autopilot off. On the thrust levers, You've got the autopilot or the auto thrust disconnect on the front and you've got the toga button on the side. And what you would do is push both of those buttons, so the thumb button, the finger button, and push the levers forward. You do that all at the same time. And it's not a it's a smooth movement of the levers. It's not a slam them forward like you might do on another type. So let's do the items individually. I'm going to firstly click the auto thrust disconnect. But before I do that, I just want you to think about your hardware position. So let me demonstrate it. If I push the hardware forward and I click the disconnect, you notice that my hardware levers are too far forward. If I was to then push the levers for a go around, it wouldn't capture the thrust position. So let's re-engage the ATS and I'll bring my hardware all the way back to idle and I'll disconnect it again. You'll see from now, if I push the levers forward, I will capture the auto thrust, uh, capture the thrust levers. So the first action is clicking the auto thrust out. I'm then going to push the toga button. That's the button uh, under One your out. thumb on the thrust levers. You notice that takes the autopilot out and gives me go around guidance. And then I'm going to push the thrust levers basically halfway forward and pitch smoothly towards that go around target. So I'm flying the aircraft manually now. So pushing the power levers smoothly forwards and pitch towards that attitude. And then I'm going to ask the FO for the next checklist item, and that's going Positive to be set go around thrust. Set go around thrust. The FO takes over go the thrust levers thrust and moves them forward to the go around position. We've had positive rate, right, so I'm going to ask for flaps 20 with the checklist action button. Flaps 20. Just flying that pitch attitude. It always gets a bit um, a bit jerky on my uh, joystick with the curves I've got on there. I'm going to ask for the gear up. Gear up. You notice my modes are go around and go around at the moment. If I hold my pitch sync, I can get into pitch mode and increase the rate of uh, increase the pitch attitude to increase the rate of climb if desired. But I'm still in gear go around in lateral, so there's no navigation at the moment. So I'm going to ask for set FMS nav with the action button. Set FMS nav. That puts me into L nav, and I've now got lateral commands as well. 
And finally, I want to say set FLC 200 knots. There's out capture. Set FLC 200 knots. And the first officer is going to wind the speed up to 200, and I can also put the ATS back in. So ATS is re-engaged. It's going to target 200 knots. There's out capture. I'll just fly the level off. Once it's nicely in trim, close to the capture, we can actually put the AP in, and that does the hard work. So autopilot's engaged. I'm just going to refine the speed to 200 knots. There's AP LNAV out capture. You'll notice I'm still at flaps 20. That's totally OK. Let's ask the SFO what the next action is. Ready for immediate return checklist. And that's us ready for the immediate return. Now, at this point, we've got a choice to make. If I go for the immediate return checklist, that's assuming I want to go back and land at Glasgow. It's going to run through all those items to get the aircraft ready to go again. Or I do have the option of going to the uh, checklist menu here and ask for the previous checklist, and that will configure the aircraft for a diversion. So you've got that choice to make at this point. But flying along quite happily, 200 knots, laps 20, you can see the go around is a fairly laid back, a fairly yeah, easy procedure. The aircraft's going to start the turn because it's uh, obviously in LNAV and it's going to head back towards the Gulf Oscar Whiskey VOR. What we'll do is we'll have another look at the missed approach. This time we'll do it closer to, to real time as you would in the real situation. Okay, so back in the cockpit, just passing through a thousand feet. The Challenger's state saving system makes this sort of stuff really easy for practicing maneuvers like this. I've set the missed approach altitude to 3000 feet as it is on the chart, and I've verified that my hardware throttle is back in the idle position. Once again, that's because when I push my hardware throttle forward, I want it to effectively catch up with the virtual hardware at the virtual throttles and grab those and push those forward. The missed approach, I'm going to disconnect the auto thrust, push the toga button, push my power levers forward and pitch to the go around attitude, almost as a single movement. And the simple command is go around. And then I'll use the automatic FO to set go around thrust. Notice also at the moment we're still set to 91 TGT, which we set on the approach. You'll notice that when we go to go around, it comes back up to the takeoff rating. So minimum's 230. That's 100 above. Minimums. Go around. Set go around thrust. Set go around thrust. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Go around thrust set. Gear up. Gear up. FMS nav. Set FMS nav. Flaps 20 indicated. LNAV. I'll just hold the pitch for a little bit. Just Gear trimming indicated. it. So above 1,000. Flight level change 200. Set FLC 200 knots. Autopilot. Auto thrust. Air speed mode. 200 selected. Out capture. And it's back in navigation mode, so it'll fly around the corner. The important thing at this point is obviously to double check your flight plan. It would be the other pilot verifying this. But if you look on legs, you'll notice it gets to the Golf Oscar Whiskey and there's no hold in there. So at this point, I'll just go to index, hold. I'll choose Golf Oscar Whiskey. And uh, let's just have a look at the chart to see if we can remember which uh, holding pattern it is. Oh, let me get the other chart up. That'd be more useful. There we go. It doesn't save the loaded chart with the state saving at the moment. So I'm looking for inbound course of 227 and right turns. Let's put that in. 227 and right turns. Execute. So we've got the hold loaded there as well. So the final uh, missed approach action is just to clear up the checklist. So if I click the uh, checklist button again, 
Ready for immediate return checklist. And again, this is the, the decision point. If I just advance the checklist, it's as if I'm going to go straight back into the, the landing at uh, Glasgow. Instead, I'm going to use the previous checklist. You can get it from the menu here. In my case, I've got a binding for it as well. So I'll ask for previous checklist or the um, after takeoff um, checklist. After takeoff checklist. Landing gear. Up. Flaps. And you'll notice that we're still flaps 20 because of the missed approach config. So I think it's appropriate to clean up. So flap zero. And these are just your normal flap commands again. This is a good opportunity to resync your hardware levers and your hardware zero. gear if you've got that to the position the aircraft is. Off. Ignition. Off. Pressurization. Checked. Packs transition. Completed. N1. Climb set. APU generator. Off. APU. Shut down. Passenger signs. That's okay, we'll leave them on. On, off, or auto. CAS. Checked. Clear. After takeoff, checklist complete. Excellent. And that's us flown a missed approach in the Challenger. We've flown the missed approach twice, once in slow time, so you could see all the individual actions. And second time round at the cadence you'd expect to do it in the real aeroplane. The aircraft is quite happily going to fly over here towards the Gulf Oscar Whiskey and pick up the hold, and then we'll come up with a plan B when we get there. So here we are, back in the cockpit. We're in the Golf Oscar Whiskey hold. We're climbing up to an altitude of 6,000 feet, and that's 1,000 feet to go. Initially, we were going to hold at 3,000 feet and have our second attempt at Glasgow, but it sounds like Glasgow's not going to reopen this evening. They've spotted some damage on the runway, and they're going to need a maintenance crew to come out and solve that. So at the moment, the intention is to divert. We've got options like Presswick, but I think tonight Edinburgh is looking like a better bet for our passengers. We've got 2.6 tonnes of fuel on board, 2, 2, uh, sorry, 2,200 kilograms of fuel. It was 2,600 when we started the descent, but 2,200 now. And uh, in the hold, we're not really burning that much. We'll burn about one tonne an hour. So we get two tonnes and the tank's dry. That's quite a comfortable place to be. I'm just going to monitor the aircraft levelling off. At 6,000 feet, and then we'll go heads down and program the diversion. There we go, out capture. Let's have a look at the settings on the aircraft. So, the easiest way to do this in the Challenger, once you've decided that you are not going to continue uh, to the initial destination, just go to the flight plan page and change your destination to your alternate. So in this case, going from EGPF to EGPH. Let's execute. And you'll notice it keeps the hold in here, but we've now got a destination of Edinburgh. We can have a look at the MFD just for a quick sanity check. It's only 40 miles away, so fuel it's not going to be a factor there. We should get there with only 200 kilos. That means we've got plenty of time in the hold to sort everything else out. So because it's so close, I'm not going to leave the hold. I'm, I'm happy in the hold. It's a safe place to be. Air traffic will leave us alone to fly around. So let's just load the arrival. It's going to be the ILS approach onto runway 06 at uh, Edinburgh. And I think it's likely we just get uh, vectors today. So let's just load the vectors arrival. Looking on legs, I think there's another waypoint we could possibly put in there as well. Nope, that looks quite reasonable, so straight to Charlie India 006. Let's have a look at the performance. We're going to need to go back to TGT 91 because we've got the uh, APU shut down. We've done the after takeoff climb checklist, so we've got to start from the descent checklist again. 
and looking at the approach performance, it's all changed over. It's got the uh, Edinburgh details, it's got the Edinburgh runway length, runway 06, it's still 15 degrees. Try runway, and then on the next phase, we'll have a look at our weight. I expect to be landing at around about 14.6. We might be here for a little bit longer, but it doesn't change that much. Let's put 14.6 in here. Notice that it's 123 at 15 tons. 400 kilos moves us by a couple of knots. Not really that much. Let's send those. And I'll pop up the charts on the right hand side. And you notice that it automatically selects the correct charts as well because the chart uh, selection it's got. Let's have the uh, upper menu. I can never remember. Escape. There we go. So it always loads what you've got in the FMS and the departure and the destination. So it's all changed over to Edinburgh automatically. All we're going to do is look for the minima on here. Straight in landing runway 06, our minima is 310. So let's open up the references. Uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, open up references, and we'll scroll down and go from 230 to 310. And our missed approach to Edinburgh, straight ahead to 3000, then as directed. That is very much a professional pilot missed approach, runway heading to 3000 feet. We can live with that. And that's basically it to plan the diversion. Of course, if you're going somewhere a bit more complicated, you could load the, the rest of the route on there as well. But it's far easier to do it on the, the primary flight plan in the challenge than mess around with secondaries and, and that sort of stuff. I don't propose to fly all the way to Edinburgh. I think you've seen the most important parts of the, uh, the approach and the go around. You saw the importance of uh, clearing up the flight plan. Make sure we use direct to the uh, CF or direct to the FF leg to make sure the FMS is looking at the appropriate waypoint. That's exactly the same as you would do on an Airbus, where you do a radial in to the uh, the, neck, the waypoint before the runway. We flew the missed approach using the automatic FO, and we looked at setting up the aircraft for the diversion. In the next video, we'll have a look at uh, shutting the aircraft down and finishing up the oil service, so you've got all the information you need to fly a complete flight A to B with the Challenger. I hope you join me again for that.